Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GinJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Monday, March 11th, second show of the day already. The Jaguars, according to the NFL media guys, Mike Garofolo, Ian Rappaport, they have agreed to terms with starting center Mitch Morris from the Buffalo Bills on a new deal. Two years, $7 million guaranteed, total of $10.5 million. We're going to dive into it right here, right now. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and also check out ginjag.com slash shop. So uh, the Jaguars, they, they got busy here before the start of legal tampering, right? They traded for Mac Jones, gave up a sixth-round pick. Whether you like that deal or not, it's going down. Mac Jones is returning to Jacksonville where he played his high school ball where he's from. So uh, the Jaguars have a new backup quarterback in town. Did a video on that earlier this morning. You can go check it out. Uh, the Jaguars also restructured Brandon Sheriff, saving about $5 million in 2024 cap space. Now they're signing Mitch Morris, as reported, right? A guy who they brought in for a visit this past weekend after being released by Buffalo. He's a veteran center. Uh, the Bills, they had to get rid of a ton of quality veterans, a ton of quality starters over the past week to get cap compliant. Mitch Morris was one of those guys, and so he had the opportunity to go sign elsewhere because he was released. Players that were released can sign prior to the start of the league year, prior to legal tampering. They can go get deals done, and that's exactly what Mitch Morris and his representation did with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, and now they have a starting caliber center, right? Uh, probably a cap hit of around $2 million in 2024, so that is great value for the Jaguars here. A guy that is over 30 years old now has tons and tons of playoff experience, a quality starter at the center position, been starting for the Chiefs and Bills for a long time, was drafted by the Chiefs in the second round, uh, was there till 2018, then signed with the Bills, and he's been with the Bills ever since, been a starter in this league, like I said, for a very, very long time. Still does not have that ring. So he needs to uh, try to get a ring to cement his legacy in the NFL, right? He's a leader, though. He's been a team captain for the Buffalo Bills for a long time. Um, you now have a veteran offensive line, an extremely veteran offensive line. Every starter now, outside of Anton Harrison, has a wealth of NFL experience. And Harrison started his entire rookie year at right tackle with a shoulder injury. So it's not like uh, he has no experience either. He had a very good rookie season overall, especially in pass protection. But now you talk about... From left to right, Cam Robinson, highly experienced left tackle. At left guard, you brought back Ezra Cleveland, who has been starting for a long time in this league as well. He's a younger player, I think only 26 years old now, but has started his entire career. Uh, at center, you now have Mitch Morris, who again, ton of experience. At right guard, Brandon Sheriff, who you restructured, ton of experience. And then Anton Harrison. So I think uh, this offensive line looks a lot better than it did just a week ago, right? Um, Luke Fortner no longer looking like the starting center in Jacksonville. And that's a big deal because Luke Fortner really, really struggled in 2023, not only from a physical standpoint, being able to stand up to some of these dominant interior defensive linemen in the NFL that the Jaguars faced, but from an assignment standpoint as well. He just didn't really look like he knew what he was doing. Maybe that's on coaching. Maybe that's on him getting in a little over his head as a starting center that early in his career. Um, it is what it is now. Luke Fortner is no longer your starting center. Mitch Morris is the guy. And I am of the belief, I've talked about this a lot, that with just average center play in 2023, the Jaguars would have been a playoff team, despite all the injuries that happened across the offensive line, on the left side, on the defensive side of the ball, at wide receiver. Um, I think that, you know, despite the injuries at quarterback as well, uh, Despite all those injuries, they still would have made the playoffs if they had just an average starting center in 2023. The reason I believe that is because not only from a down-to-down -down perspective, the, the play calls that were called, those were difficult to execute because of the porous center play, but he limited the plays the Jaguars could call. You could tell that Press Taylor and Doug Peterson – they did not feel comfortable opening up their offense the way they normally do with the offensive line that they had. And again, the catalyst for the poor offensive line play was the center position. So I think you're talking about not only impacting plays that were called negatively, but limiting the plays you could call because of that center position. Now, not the only issue with the Jaguars offensive line in 2023 or the Jaguars offense in 2023. We know this, but at center, 
if you just had average play, again, I think the Jaguars are a playoff team in 2023. And um, that's on everyone. That's on Trent Baalke. That's on Luke Fortner, Doug Peterson, everybody. You had to get more out of what you got from the center position in 2023. They didn't, but they have now course corrected there. So I'm very happy with this move. To me, though, it isn't a long-term solution, right? Uh, this does not stop me from taking a center or an interior offensive line prospect in the draft that I believe could play center down the road um, at all. Again, I think you need to continue to fortify the the offensive line on all fronts. Um, you got to protect the investment. Trevor Lawrence, you've already just dis- started discussing discussing excuse me the new contract, right? You've got to get him locked up long term. He is the face of the franchise. He is the uh, franchise quarterback here, you got to protect him. And I think bringing in Mitch Morris helps with that. Uh, but he improves your starting lineup in a big way. Again, Luke Fortner no longer a starter. He He's a very experienced third-year player, though, Luke Fortner is, and he, he's now a backup for you. So you improve your starting lineup and you improve your depth there. Uh, again, you brought back Ezra Cleveland on a deal that was in line with what was expected for him, and I did expect the Jaguars to want to bring back Ezra Cleveland. They did exactly that. Uh, If you can have just a little bit better health on the left side of that offensive line, a little bit better coaching, a little more cohesion, this offensive line can get the job done, in my opinion. They definitely can pass protect. Like I have no doubt about their ability to protect Trevor Lawrence and Trevor Lawrence's ability to maneuver the pocket. Right? Uh, If there's edge pressure, which Cam Robinson and Anton Harrison do a good job of preventing, and so does Walker Little, the third tackle, that's one thing. You can step up in the pocket. As long as Mitch Morris and these guys on the interior can get the job done, which I think they can at a much higher level than they did last year with Luke Fortner at center and a revolving door at left guard due to injuries, I think you've got a shot here. And I think they all have the physical ability to get the running game going. But again, it's going to take better coaching, more cohesion, more understanding, more continuity, less injuries uh, than than they had in 2023 especially. They didn't really have a very good running game the year prior, but it was at least more functional. But this is going to be a pass-first offense. It always is. When you have Doug Peterson, when you have Trevor Lawrence, it's going to be pass-first, and I do believe this offensive line can pass-protect at at least a moderately high enough level to where Trevor Lawrence can feel comfortable back there and be able to get the ball out to his receivers and do a good job in that regard. Uh, But, you know, Andre James, he signed with, re-signed with the Raiders yesterday. So the center market was not going to be as robust. Still a couple guys out there that may be in the same tier, maybe a little bit better, maybe a little younger than Mitch Morris, uh, you know, Lloyd Cushenberry. Um, But this is a huge upgrade at the position. Because going from arguably the worst starting center in the league, and some people might say that's not arguable, but arguably the worst starting center in the league to someone who is slightly above average starter. I think that's massive. And someone who is a leader, someone who has been a team captain, someone who's been here and done that, been to the playoffs a ton, helped his football teams get to the playoffs, right? Uh, Did make the Pro Bowl in 2022. So this is a player I think the Jaguars can feel really good about. Legal tampering, again, kicks off today at noon Eastern time. You can keep it locked here for all the latest updates. You can follow me on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. Y'all have a good one.